Let's talk open gear lubrication. So in the previous lesson, we talked about the idea that the gear surface is the summation of all the different things that go into manufacturing. So um, you know, there is the defective surface, there is the waviness that's brought about by machining vibrations, as well as the roughness that simply comes about from the actual machining process itself. And when you sum all of these waves together, what you effectively get is the final gear surface. Now, in an ideal world, we want that gear surface to be as smooth as possible, right? We want to reduce the height of those peaks and troughs to get something that's maybe a little bit more similar to this, right? Now, remember, it's not a single gear tooth uh, or gear surface on its own. It needs to be thought of relative to something else. And that relative is, of course, the machining of the other gear tooth that it's interacting with. So typically one of these will be the pinion and the other one will be, be the girth gear. Now, if we were to take these two particular surfaces, for example, um, and let's say we just fill them in for a second, what we want is we want complete separation between them, right? Obviously, you know, a, a most of the abrasive and adhesive wear occurs when you get contact between the two metal surfaces. And it's mostly the responsibility of the lubricant to ensure that they're completely separated. Now with the kind of high loads that we are experiencing in open gear settings, that can often be a difficult task. And so we enlist the help of additives, right? So we, we want a couple of things here. First of all, what we want is for the lubricant to have some kind of like tackiness or maybe like a cohesiveness to it. Um, that cohesive property is going to help stick some of the hydrocarbons to the metal surfaces and help them retain there. Sometimes we also use things like EP style additives, right, which are, you know, uh, a lot of sulfurated um, olefins, for example, which will uh, bind to the metal surfaces and then they have this kind of like oily tail or, or, or fatty tail that helps provide some lubricity between the two surfaces. And sometimes, right, we also might use like a solid lubricant, uh, a solid lubricant that might um, wedge itself between the metal surfaces and provide um, a little bit of, um, let's say for example, uh, in the case of graphite or moly, it provides these uh, very low shear surfaces. And it's almost like running on top of playing cards, right? So. You're, you're just the the load is simply transferring from one card to another so that's the kind of stuff that we desire out of an open gear lubricant now remember uh, just to go back to the fundamentals for a second there are of course three different types of lubrication you've got boundary in which we get full metal to metal contact right that's an area where we have to be very very careful because we're likely to experience a lot of wear then we transition into the mixed lubrication regime where the load is kind of distributed between the base oil of the lubricant as well as the metal surfaces themselves. And then eventually you get into the full hydrodynamic film, which is probably the most desirable, um, where you get full separation between the surfaces and that results in the least amount of wear. So what are some of the considerations that go into uh, establishing that hydrodynamic film, right? So if we want to completely separate the machine surfaces to reduce the amount of wear, right, which we want to do because these gear sets are very, very expensive, then what are the kinds of things that we have to think about? Well, let's look at uh, some of the characteristics of uh, this interface between the two gear teeth. So for one thing, you've got the surface finish. And surface finish, we can sort of define by like this uh, parameter, which we'll call sigma, which is almost like a root mean square uh, parameter, which kind of determines, if you like, this is not a very good explanation, but the, the waviness of the actual tooth profile. And we can define that sigma for both gear teeth, right? And generally the surface finish is different between the gear teeth, right? So we actually have two different values. Then we also have what is the film thickness. The film thickness is this value H. Now H, there's two different types. There is the uh, sort of the minimum film thickness and then there's the measured film thickness. And basically what happens is if you take the mean of the gear tooth surface and you measure between them, that gives you the actual functioning film thickness. And the minimum th film thickness is governed by this equation here. Now you don't need to know this, right? But what you need to know or what is helpful to understand is that the 
uh, the coefficients that go in here are related to the absolute viscosity of the lubricant, the pressure viscosity relationship of the lubricant, and then a load factor which is independent of the lubricant. And note that this load parameter W, right, its power is to the negative, right, 0.13 which means that the film thickness is inversely proportional to the load. And that makes sense, right? The more load that I put on the lubricant, the thinner that film should get. So intuitively, this makes sense. Now, we have another parameter, which is called the specific film thickness, which is a value lambda. And basically what that does is it takes the film thickness H and divides it, right, by the, the root mean square of the two different surface roughness values, right? This hopefully should start to make a little bit of sense for you. So what it says is the specific film thickness, right, is the relation between the actual lubricating film thickness and the surface roughness. So for example, if the surface roughness is very high, right, I can have a very, very thick film but if the surface roughness is really rough, then my metal, uh, my metal to metal contact is still going to occur. If my film thickness, for example, is very low, then I can tolerate, um, I, I can't, sorry, I can't tolerate uh, very much uh, surface roughness, right? Because that goes into the denominator. Now, when you look at all these terms, H is a function of viscosity and load. And the bottom, the denominator, these sigma values are a function of the machining capability. So you can think of this specific film thickness as being proportional to viscosity divided by load, and then all of that divided by the machining tolerances. Now, load we're not going to consider for a moment because the load is whatever the load design load is, right? It's, it's very rare that you, as a, as a lubrication professional, can go in and, and tell someone to reduce the amount of load. Right. Now, as far as the surface roughness goes, initially it's constant. It's whatever the gear tooth manufacturing is, but it can then degrade with different wear modes. And there are some lubricants that we can use to actually help try and effectively polish the surface finish or repair the surface finish as well. So that machining, maybe that's something that we can do about. But the primary, the primary way that we can control this uh, specific film thickness is through the selection of the uh, viscosity, right? And this is true of open gears, it's true of enclosed gears, it's true of bearings, you know, all of our different uh, mechanical components. Specific film thickness is absolutely crucial and the viscosity selection is crucial. Now, most of the studies that have been done on specific film thickness are actually in the realm of bearings. So there's been a lot that's been published on what we call bearing life extension factors. And basically, it, the, the curve has this kind of shape, where as you increase the value of lambda, you can increase the life of the bearing. Now, at some point, there is diminishing returns. And what they found is that the optimal value is around a lambda of two, right? So what you get is you get good bearing life extension, but you don't sacrifice too much on the energy efficiency side. So let's say, for example, I had a lambda of 10, for argument's sake, right? So a very, very high specific film thickness. What that suggests is that I've picked a very, very high viscosity lubricant. Well, in some ways, that's unnecessarily high. And what I'm probably doing is, you know, wasting a lot of energy having to churn against that viscosity. So two seems to be sort of like the optimal number. And if you'll see that if you start to get to a, 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 a specific film thickness of one, now we're entering that sort of mixed and boundary film lubrication. And that's why we get a reduction in our bearing life. Now, why am I talking about this in the context of open gears? Well, it's because there was actually a study that was published in 2014, right? Which mapped gear life onto this concept of bearing life extension. And what they found was that it reasonably closely um, matches up. Now the data may not look like it, right? Because there's a fair bit of scatter in the data. But what they were able to demonstrate is that, you know, it seems that the life extension, which ca carries over from bearings, also applies to gears as well. And so 
if we're aiming for a lambda of sort of like two and above, right, in open gearing systems, maybe you want a little bit higher to give you a bit more reserve, then that kind of seems like it's, it's on the right path. So what are the requirements that we have of open gear lubricants, right? Well, one thing, we want tackiness. So we want them to adhere to the actual surface. We'll get into a little, that a little bit more in future modules. We want it to be resistant to water washout and spray off. So again, because they're not in an enclosed or they're not in an enclosure, that means that you know often they might be subject to water spray and things like that. And we don't want the lubricant leaving the gear tooth and, and losing its protection. We want it to protect from friction and wear. So we want it to have that load carrying capability. Uh, we want it to protect against corrosion, reduce vibrations. Um, we ideally want a system, and we'll get into this later, that is sprayable, right? So a lot of the different systems which are used to apply open gear lubricants to the teeth are spray systems. So we want something that's easy to dispense in an automated way. We want resistance to fling off, so that's related to the tackiness. And what we don't want is a buildup in the root of the gear tooth. So I talked about that briefly in, I think, the first module, where we talked about the fact that you can get buildup of degradation products, and that can actually affect the alignment of the pinion and the girth gear. And finally, in an ideal world, we want it to be drainable so that we can easily remove it from guards.